Yo, listen. Platinum on the mic, and I'm coming for your ass. I'm listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. And I think it's the hottest show in the game. Because them and everybody loves the acclaim. Now, scissor me. Before we get started, I want to shout out our sponsors here on the BCP. As always, the BCP is brought to you by our favorite store, Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore, located online and at the English Town Flea Market in English Town, New Jersey, on Saturdays and Sundays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Blue Building. Get your wrestling stuff, retro video games, G.I. Joe's, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters. It's our favorite store. Thank you, Heather and Dan, for sponsoring the show. Guys, we also want to welcome in our new sponsors, Warriors of Wrestling. WoW brings the action to Breezy Point, New York on August 26th for our next event, Payback, featuring appearances by Darius Carter, TJ Marconi, Chris Steeler, Joe Ocasio, and more. Tickets are available now at warriorsofwrestling.com, and be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Please welcome in our new sponsor, Mania Club. Established in 2015, Mania Club is a WWE-recognized community for fans with an eclectic love for both the world of professional wrestling and raising money for Connor's Cure. During WrestleMania weekend, we host the official tailgate of WrestleMania while also celebrating the life of Connor McCulloch. They're the single largest donor within the V Foundation for Connor's Cure with over 150,000 raised. Please donate and join the Facebook group over at Mania Club. Donate at JimmyV.org slash Mania Club. The BCP is also sponsored by the No Gimmicks Podcast, the pro wrestling podcast that keeps it 100% real, 100% of the time. The No Gimmicks Podcast is available wherever you get your podcast. Shout out, Calvin. Check out the No Gimmicks Podcast. We're also sponsored by our friends over at Global Wrestling Family. GWF is about inclusivity and celebrating a common love for pro wrestling amongst the fans and wrestlers. T-shirts, hats, and more merch is available now. Join the group on Facebook at Global Wrestling Family. And be sure to follow them on Instagram at Global Wrestling Family. Wrestling All Day, All Night is the best wrestling discussion group on Facebook. We provide more of a community feel here and have wrestling fans introduce other fans to something they may have not seen before, such as old school wrestling, indie wrestling, Japanese wrestling, and more. We also strive to be a source for information regarding upcoming wrestler meet and greets and signings. And remember, we're open 24-7, all day, all night. Be sure to follow on socials and join the group on Facebook at Wrestling All Day, All Night. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know what to say right now. Welcome into a very special international shiny star edition of the BCP. Please welcome back to the show. He is Ray Trace Belt. He has so many belts. He is the ISPW golden ticket holder. He is the star of Where in the World is Ray Kalitri. Please ba- welcome back to the show. The international shiny star, our good friend, Mr. Ray Kalitri. Where is he today, ladies and gentlemen? Where is he? Uh, the reveal, the reveal, the reveal. Ah, oh, gosh. We are in front of the Roman Coliseum in uh, Rome, Italy. That's where we are. Not a green screen. Bro, that is nope. bad. Look, look, I'll I show you. Look, look, look. Not a green screen. Look, you see that? Not a green oh, screen. Oh, my gosh. That's wild, man. As a, yeah. as a combat sports athlete, as a professional wrestler, like we know the Coliseum is known for um lots of things but primarily my first thoughts is gladiator and the gladiators and the contest that took place there man you said you actually got to go inside i mean as someone in you know that <laughs> you know the combat sports and the pro wrestling and all that like going in there and standing in there i don't know if you got to be in the center or anything like that like what was that like for you 
Um, okay, so before I get started with all of that, can I take uh, two minutes out of this interview real quick yeah. so I can shine the light on so I can shine the light on you? Um, uh, there's something that I've always said behind uh, seat, behind uh, the scene, backstage. Mm -hmm. uh, something that if the public doesn't know, they should know. You are the unsung hero of the indies because not only do you take your time out. Uh, to interview guys such as myself and other talent and other women and all that other stuff in between. Um, but you also take the time to do commentary. You also take the time to, hey, man, you know, if, if Rob is just hanging around, hey, can you record this match for me? You do an awesome job recording uh, the matches uh, for, for talent and for the promotions and everything else in between. And not only that, but also you are starting your very own BCP Plus, uh, which I think is an absolutely awesome endeavor for you and your team and your crew. And to see you grow uh, from where I met you uh, two years ago, three years ago to now, it is absolutely amazing. And for everyone who has helped out with your Kickstarter and everything, awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. It did super exceed your expectations, which is awesome. Um, but I just want to take the, the you know few minutes real quick out of this to shine the light on you and let people know how truly awesome you are and how giving you are with your time. Because not only did you do a show yesterday for Warriors, right? And I am six hours ahead of you right now. So you're probably running like on no sleep and like five cups of coffee. And it is uh, 6 a.m. Uh, back in the East Coast. And here you are. You're just, you know, you're grinding it out. So I just want to shine the light on you uh, for a few minutes. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. And uh, I always say it's a two-way street, man. You guys have given me so much. And uh, let's be real. I just carry uh, Vicky's bags. That's that's my main job. Uh, but <laughs> no, and I, and I thank you for putting over the site, man. I appreciate that. But Ray... Um, and, and thank you to you, man, because I get to see the world uh, and live vicariously through you like I always do, man. You've been in front of the pyramids. Now you're standing in front of that Coliseum, man, which as soon as you turn on the camera, I was like, wow, man, like, I don't even know what to say, man. It's breathtaking. It's a beautiful day. The shining star is yep. there. I mean, what is that Coliseum, um, you know, being outside there and going inside been like for you? Dude, so like one of the things about me, especially when I'm traveling, um, especially to like monumental sites like this, I like to sort of like put my mind to where it would be 2000 years ago, like what it would be like, obviously I'm not going to know, um, but what it would be like to like walk the streets being a Roman emperor or a Roman guard or like a gladiator or something like that. And when you just walk in, cause you know, I, I have performed um, in Mexico in the Tijuana arena in front of 7,000 people. And that roar was crazy. And I can't even imagine like when I was walking through in through the inside of this, uh, Freaking, I don't even know the word for this. this thing is beyond amazing. But as I was walking inside, I'm like, can you imagine just like 80,000 people just roaring at you? Because that's the capacity of, of this place. Uh, and then you try to put yourself in that mindset. Well, me, anyway, I try to put myself in that mindset of, of the gladiators who would literally be there. You, you know, you're about to go face someone else and it's either your life or theirs. Yeah. And then you throw in, you throw in the fact of like, the, you know, they throw animals at you and different weapons and like all this crazy madness and all this, like, I don't know. It was just, it, it was an insane energy to walk in and, and, and just feel. That's, that's so cool, man. And, um, so cool. I got uh, dude, I got to ask you this because you, you, you know, you're sending me some pictures and stuff like that, man. Um, first and foremost, why, Italy, man. And I, and I think the Coliseum may be one of like the new seven wonders of the world. So I knew that was kind of like something you've been doing as well, man. But why uh, Italy? So Italy, I'm, I'm trying to find Vicious Vicky. I, I don't know where she is. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've, been, I've, been, I've been searching all over Italy. I can't uh, find her. Sorry. I don't know where she yeah. is. You know I mean? <laughs> no, no, but seriously. Um, nice. I, had this, I had this bucket list uh, that I made about three years ago where I wanted to start with the new seven wonders of the world, but also the last remaining seven wonders of the world, which was the Pyramids of Giza, which I did two years ago. Um, and then I started attacking the new list, which I did the Pyramids of Chichen Itza, which is in Mexico. I did the Machu Picchu, which is in Peru. Right now I am in the Roman Coliseum, which is in Rome, Italy. And then uh, the plan is to finish off the rest of the list. So That's so cool, man. And I believe... Yeah. Um, you know, we always like to talk when you're on your trips because, man, I, you know, I find sure. as I'm older and when I was younger, I, I did get to go to Paris. I did get to London, but I didn't really appreciate it because I was so young. Um, you know, I got to go to the Louvre and and do all that stuff, man. And I haven't done any of that in a very, very long time. I'm, I'm an old man now. I'm living vicariously <laughs> through you, uh, Ray, man. And, and I find now that I'm older, I start to appreciate um, the culture. So you share something very cool with me. Um you know, from Venice, which is known for the water and all that. Oh, so tell us a yes. little bit about Venice and that picture that you sent me. 
Ah, uh, dude. So first of all, to get to Venice, um, it's like a whole, which I didn't know any of this. And people are going to be screaming. They're like, oh, my God, you're such an idiot. But I didn't know. Okay. So Venice is an island within itself. Um, so once we got in, you cannot drive your vehicle into Venice. Uh, you had to park your vehicle. And then you have a few options. Either you walk to your destination, your hotel or Airbnb or whatever it is that you're doing. Or you catch a water taxi, which is the same as a taxi, but it's a boat on a taxi. Or you catch the uh, water ferry or the boat ferry, as they call it. Um, we tried doing the whole touristy thing because we want the experience that we want to see. So we did the boat uh, ferry. And needless to say, we got completely lost, right? So if you're looking at where we parked our car to where we had to go, it was a 10-minute walk. But we're like, oh, you know what? Let's do the tourist thing. So we do the tourist thing. Long story short, three hours later, okay, because no one's no one's helpful around here, okay? And if another thing is, if you do not speak Italian, they don't speak English, and they don't care to speak English, uh, well, for the people that I've come across. Um, but back to the picture. Oh, well, anyway, we finally get back to the Airbnb and stuff like that. So I put my bag down, and my bag starts rolling. It starts doing this by itself, and I'm like, it's it, like on a pitch like that. And I'm like, what the heck? So as I sit down, because they had a little table there, and I look at the table... And the table, and you see like the tiles, this would be the tiles, mm -hmm. and then the table, but then the tiles would sort of be like, well, I'm sorry, sort of like this. So the table's straight, but the tiles, are, I'm like, yo, there's something off here. So then I, I went into the bedroom, which is the picture that I sent you. Um, you see the picture frames are sort of leaning a little bit to the left. And, you know, I started going into the rabbit hole in Google, and it's because the, the city of Venice is sinking uh every so millimeters per year or something like that. So it was super interesting to see and to experience. That's crazy, man. Um, and that's so cool. Like little things like that, you know, um, you're telling me, I'm like, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, man. That's very fascinating. Um, but right. My first thought, man, when you went to Italy, man, and, and I want your honest opinion here, bro. Sure. Uh, we'll we'll sure. get to the wrestling in a little bit, but my first thought yeah, was okay. the food, man. How is the food? In uh, Italy? Uh, okay. So first of all, us Americans were doing it completely wrong. Okay? Yeah, because over here, over here, when they give you the pizza, they don't cut it with the little cutter thing that, that they use uh, back home. With the pizza cutter, they don't yeah. use that. They use a, a fork and knife, and that's how you do it. Um, over here, I, I ordered a uh, carbonara with the uh, with the pasta and everything, and I told the lady, I was like, "Hey, can I throw a little chicken in there?" She looked at me like I was crazy. She looked like she was about to spit, bro. She looked like she was about to spit on me, bro. She goes. No. So I'm like, what do you mean? So we've been doing everything completely wrong uh, from what I'm getting over here with the food. And, but the food here is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. So good. Yeah, dude, that that was like my first thought. I'm like, I wonder, you know, if, if the food's got to be like legit, man. I love Italian. I mean, American Italian food, but the food over there's got to be legit, man. That's that's so cool to hear. And I love me some good uh, pasta carbonara, you know, so I would have put some chicken in there. I'm just saying. Um, so quick much question, quick question, please, quick question, please. quick question, real quick, quick. Where, if I were to ask you, where do you think wine originated from? What's going to be your first answer? I would, do France. I'd say France or Italy. Fra same thing that I thought. Believe it or not, yeah. it was it's originated from West Asia. Really? Did not know that, yes, sir. Man. See, I like, I yes, like, sir. I like learning all this stuff, man. It's uh, that's very. There you go. Yeah, keep the more the you know, right? Yeah, keep the facts coming, man. That's that's awesome. I, I got one more. I got one more for you. Please, Venice. Venice is actually uh, built. Uh, the base of Venice of the island, I should yeah. say, is built on wooden planks. That's why it doesn't sink, and it doesn't sink because the water that's surrounding that island, uh, the oxygen is depleted, which means that's why the wood that's there doesn't rot. Interesting. Yeah, that would make sense. That is very interesting, man. That's yep. crazy. The more you know, look at this yeah. guy, man. Very, very cultured, right? Ray, obviously very accomplished, very traveled, very cultured, yes. but also very decorated, as we always talk about uh, here on the BCP, man. I'm going to talk about this golden ticket. Let's talk about oh, this. All right, man. man. First of all, That's congratulations. The last time we spoke to you was mere hours before you won that battle royal to become the ISPW golden ticket holder. And something about Ray, you know, he comes out, he had a golden ticket. We're not just bringing out a ticket here. We got the briefcase. We're stepping it up, man. This this is Kalitri style. I, I'm not gonna lie. I I expected that from you, man. I've come to know. <laughs> I've come to know you well enough, and and congratulations on that. 
Um, let's talk about this and we'll talk about the ISPW tri-state championship, but I want to talk about this, man. Um, you had some interactions with bull James, who was dealing with uh, recon at the time. Uh, recon sure. was the ISPW heavyweight champion, someone who I felt you've worked with enough and you've known well enough to feel fairly confident challenging him or cashing in whenever you could recon no longer in the picture, Richard holiday, man, he is the new ISPW heavyweight champion. He's impressed me, man. He's impressed me for a long time. He looks good in the ring, man. I know you're going to pick your spots. I know you have other things to worry about. We'll talk about that, man. Just give me your thoughts on the current ISPW heavyweight champion, Richard Holiday. He's impressive, man. So Richard Holiday, I don't know much about him, but he is, let's face it, let's be honest, he is the Cinderella story of professional wrestling right now, right? With everything that he had to overcome, he comes back. He was away from the sport 352 days or something like that. Um, he comes back and gets put automatically into a title picture. Rather, he had to go through a tournament or not. And he is ISPW's new heavyweight champion. With that being said, I don't know much about you, Richard. I don't care to know much about you, Richard. The only thing that I know is that you, my friend, are holding something that I need Richard, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want. Understand the difference between need and want. I need the ISPW heavyweight championship around my waist. That's what I need. That's all I know. I don't know nothing about Richard. I don't know nothing. Wow. And you know what, man? I, I kind of respect it, man, because you're like, hey, you know what? Like, he's he's newer here in ISPW. I mean, we've seen him in the past, you know. But sure. now he's got this big climb, this big story. We're also happy he's healthy. That's the most important thing, of course, man. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. but to you, man, you know, when it comes down to business, you know, you have this ticket. It's just, it's another competitor. And I have a feeling you have a plan like always. That being said, Ray, and I have my sources, man. I've heard Richard's been backstage at some places, may have some opportunities coming up. So we'll see what the future of that ISPW heavyweight uh, holds. And everyone, of course, be sure to be in Wildwood, New Jersey, August 26th, because my man Ray Kalitri will be defending the ISPW Tri-State Championship against our good friend, GKM in a cage steel cage match. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ray. We're gonna be at the beach. You know, me and the vicious one. We're gonna be down there for a couple days. We're gonna make a little trip out of it. It's gonna be a good time. Nice. Wildwood, nice. New Jersey. You know, it's not Italy, but you know, we do what we can. And <laughs> um, you know, Ray, cage match, man. Uh, what's the mindset? Obviously, the backstage interviewer and me. But what's the mindset going into a cage match for your coveted ISPW Tri State Championship? So this is gonna be my first ever cage match of my career i've seen a bunch of them on pay-per-views and for other companies and everything else i know wow. a bunch of my friends i've been i know a bunch of my friends who have been in a bunch of them but for me personally this is going to be my first one um so to me there's only there's only one mindset that i'm coming in with this right which is two men enter one man leaves now i have to do whatever it is that i have to do to make sure that I am that one man that leaves the cage, right? Um, but it, as I'm taking this and as I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking of a game plan of how to execute, uh, you know, from my previous battles that I've had with GKM or previous matches that I've had with anyone throughout my career, it all gets thrown out the window because now you're confined in a steel cage where, like, pretty much anything goes. So, you know, anything that you've had, like, Rather, it's a move set. Rather, it's a certain comeback that you do, or a certain uh, rallying up with the crowd, or whatever it is. It's all that stuff gets thrown out the window, and now it becomes a matter of survival, a matter of can I outlast my opponent and knock him out, or and do whatever it is that I got to do to make sure that I'm able to walk out of that steel cage, be the one man that walks out while you leave the other man laying. So that's that's the mindset that I have going on right now. I love it, right? And I think that's going to be a possible show stealing match. Again, Ray saying that's going to be his first steel cage match. And Ray, I'll ask you this one. You mentioned some of your friends earlier. You know, obviously, when you guys are in the ring, you know, your 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 opponents. That being said, I want to talk about your good friend, member of the Good Poppies, and now a mainstay here at ISPW, mm. Joey Ace. You know, you guys. You know, Joey came in. I thought, hey, you know what? Ray might have some tricks up his sleeves. No offense. Uh, Joey might be in his corner. Um, but you guys, you know, you've been squaring off and it's for the gold. I mean, tell us about that relationship um, with Joey outside the ring. And then when you're inside the ring. 
So outside the ring, um, absolutely love that guy. We, we spend hours on the phone talking about different ideas. How can we elevate each other's careers uh, to the next level as we both are trying to get to the national level where he has had a little bit more success than me um, as far as like reaching out and, and doing some national spots. Uh, as far as me, I reach out and I get international spots. So we try to like, hey, what do you do to get here? What do you do to get there? Like, who do you talk to? This, that, whatever. So we sort of like help each other out. Uh, but that dude is like my one of my brothers, man. Um, I, there's, there's not many there's not many people that I could say that about in this business. As you know, it's, it's a cliche that everyone says. But that's like one of the few guys that if I call right now, he'll pick up. And again, it's 6 o'clock in the morning or whatever it is back home. Um, and we'll sit there and we'll talk just for like hours just about life and, and you know, my kid and, and, you know, our careers and everything else in between and family. Uh, but then, you know, when it comes and the camera's on, it's a completely different story because he has to respect my body of work just like I have to respect his body of work, which means we're not always going to get along. We're not always going to click. We're not always going to mesh. We're not always going to be together. And if we're butting heads and we're battling, then that's what it is. And it. And I know that in ISPW's Wildwood Convention Center, he has a big triple threat match. And if he so happens to be the winner and he so happens to win the ISPW Heavyweight Championship at any point, don't get mistaken because I will cash in on you. Yeah, I, I believe it, Ray. You know, you're playing. Everyone's playing checkers, man. You're you're playing chess. You know, you've had a a lot of success, man. You're walking in with a lot of gold. The ISPW gold. It's good to be Ray Kalitri right now, man. And <laughs> and I'll ask you this one because you have held so much middleweight gold. And let's not. That is nothing to scoff at. First of all, amazing sure. accomplishment. But you have made these legit, even though they are not heavyweight championships yet, which we will talk about. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. always say. And your colleagues have said, "You're, dude, you're in Italy right now. You make these <laughs> world championships, man. You travel, you go train in other countries, you work in other countries, you take these championships around the world, right? I think that's amazing. But for you, how important is it for you to one day? And I know, obviously, your eye is on the ISPW Heavyweight Championship, as it should be. You're in a great position, man. But how important is it for you to one day to become the heavyweight champion of a promotion? Ah, uh, okay. So it is important to me, but it's also not. It's not because, and this is going to drive people crazy. It's not because if I, if I obsess over a certain thing, let's say as far as becoming heavyweight champion of a certain promotion and it doesn't happen i stop having fun within the process and then i just get bitter and then i'm not i'm coming to work and i'm not you know happy and i'm just angry and i'm upset and i don't want to work with anybody and i you know i start being unprofessional right so i try not to think about it too much will it be you know when i do get it right it that's a green light and a nod from like whatever promoter it is that you're working for to say hey this is my guy this is the guy that represents the company and it is important to me because at the end of the day when I first started, no one looked twice at me. No, I got more no's than yeses, right? And now when you see the transformation of the international shining star within the past two or three years to from when I first started, now everyone wants to work with me. Everyone wants to collab with me. Everyone wants to bring me in to all of these different international promotions and say, hey, I want you to work with my type guy. Hey, I want you, okay, you're, you're going to be in Italy. I right, come over here, work this guy. You know, you're in Mexico, oh, work this guy. Oh, you know, you're in Peru. Okay, we don't have a show, but come train this class. You're in Egypt. All right, we don't have a show due to COVID restrictions. All right, so train this class. So to me, it is important because it like solidifies what everyone is thinking, but they're afraid to say, which is like, I'm a mainstay in the Northeast. Uh, I'm a, like, you know, it's one of those things where they say my name in the Northeast. They're like, oh, Ray Kalitra. Yeah, I've heard of that guy, right? But once you make the transition to heavyweight champion, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who that guy is. You know what I mean? So that's that's important to me just to, like, cement my name in the, in the independent scene in the Northeast. I I love it, Ray. And, and I'm not just blowing you up because you're here, but I feel that you have 
elevated all of these championships, whether they're heavyweight, middleweight, um, you know, whatever titles. I think that's so cool, man. And, and forgive the analogy, man. Um, but compared to the national product, I would compare you to a, a Gunther or a Walter right now. Those long title reigns, um, certainly mm. a, a guy who could possibly one day dethrone Roman, you know, on the on the national product. If we want to talk that way, man, uh, the workhorse right. over there elevating the titles. And certainly uh, that's my opinion. But I can see the opinions of your colleagues. We always talk about that, man. And that is so very, very cool, man. And we talk about all the titles and all the gear, man. Um, so I mentioned this to you briefly, but I want you to walk mm. me through this uh, as best you can. Tell us a normal day traveling with all the belts going through <laughs> TSA with uh with all these championships. Can you give us anything? Are our pictures being taken? Are they like, what is this? Who are you? What do you do? How, give me a give me a little run through. <laughs> so it was actually uh it's actually pretty funny now that you bring that up. Um <laughs> we were here yesterday. We were filming on set. I was filming a promo, right? Uh minding my business, as always, right? And uh, I go to take a promo picture with, uh, you know, three titles that I currently hold and the ISPW Golden Ticket. I couldn't bring my fourth title because I couldn't fit into a suitcase. That's yeah, a long yes. story. Champion yeah. problems. Yep, yep. Yeah, champion problems. So, you know, I'm sitting there minding my business, taking a promotional picture or a promo picture, as you would call it. Um, and just a flock of 20 people just came around me. And the one guy, the first guy, he was from England. He comes over. He goes, professional wrestler, right? And I'm like, yes. I'm like, yo, you're the first person that's ever guessed that right. Everyone always sees things boxing or mma um and you know it was pretty cool I, I got to talk with him for a little bit so we got to take a awesome. picture he got to air he got to airdrop it to me um and then oh you know my daughter's here with me her name is cj and she, she goes she's sitting in the in the behind the scenes and she goes oh my god are you serious and then soraya turns to her she goes listen this is all the time like you don't even understand <laughs> you you only this is your first time here this yeah. happens all the time mm -hmm. and, and you know cj's like oh and she just started like playing on her phone. Um, and, it, you know, 20 minutes later, we finally finished everything that we had to do. So I always get that all the time. So that's that's so Champ cool, man. Championship I, I, problems, right? Championship problems. That's it. And you know what? I, and as, as a good journalist, I will apologize. I said Ray Trace belts at the be beginning. That is incorrect. Uh, he's quattro. got quattro. quattro. Quattro, man. They keep it's hard to keep up, right? It's hard to keep up. I do my best, man. Um, How can I do Ray, we, we talked about this briefly at the con, but I, I do want to talk about this, man. Um, you know, I always say I have my sources and I know a lot of um, a lot of promotions are very high on you uh, from the mm. gate. You come in, you make a good impression. And I think that's why you get the opportunities to work some of the names. I think that's why mm -hmm. you get the opportunities to have the major titles and the major opportunities and the major storylines. And you know how I feel about you. I feel that's very, very well deserved. And it's because of not just the in-ring stuff, it's the intangibles, it's the outside the ring stuff. Mm. We did the red carpet at the 80s con. Um, you know, I saw you going to Tommy's store, you know, appearing for whether he was doing like the trivia nights or special appearances or signings. Uh, you know, you got to talk to some of the legends at 80s con the night before. I mean, just tell us again about that philosophy, man. I, I just think it's the little things. And I think up and coming wrestlers need to listen to this, man, about going the extra mile and, and representing a company and doing the little things, even if you aren't necessarily booked and, and things like that, showing up at events, just talk about that, that mindset and philosophy. Cause I think it's very important. Uh, okay. So everything starts with you, right? Um, you cannot declare yourself a professional in anything. If you do not train, you know, I, I hate to bring names into this and stuff like that, but LeBron James, 19 years in the league, that man still trains, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes, biggest quarterback in the NFL, that man still trains, uh, you know, the list goes on Aaron judge himself. Okay. to bring it back to a little local team well, not a little local team, but bring it back to a local team, Aaron judge, that guy still trains. So everyone has a big misconception of, Oh, you know, I went to a wrestling school and I finished their program and it took me eight months or whatever. And now I'm a professional wrestler. So now I'm just not going to train, right? So, and that, that's a little pet peeve of mine is like, how do you call yourself a professional if you're not continuously training, continuously working on your craft, continuously learning from other people where you could grow and be better and get better. And in return, you could possibly teach other people as well, right? But to go back to your question a little bit, it all starts with you. It all starts with the training. 
And then the, uh, the next part of it is everyone wants to be champion. Everyone wants to hold the title. Everyone wants to make history. Everyone wants to be in the record books. Sure. Great. No problem. You have to work hard to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once you're there, right, once you're at the top of the mountain and everyone's looking at you and everyone wants to take the pictures with you and everybody wants to do the interviews with you, right? Now, what are you going to do to stay on top? How do you stay on top? Again, look at anyone who's ever successful. What do they do? Follow their blueprint, which is, right, do the red carpets, do the interviews, say hello to the fans. Whether you're a good guy, bad guy, it doesn't matter. Say hello to the fans because without the fans, guess what? You wouldn't be where you are today. I don't care who you are. Go up, try, well, do your best that you can to go above and beyond to help the people that are just starting, right? Like the newer class that are training or whatever the case may be. Um, be open to criticism from people. Hey, what do you think of this? Okay. Hey, I want this idea, but I don't know how to sort of put it together. Network with people. So it's, it's a whole lot more than just being champion. To me, is like, okay, now now you have the title, now what? Because everyone knows that chasing the title is the fun part because you get to create and you get to be, um, you get to actually like implement all these little things that you've been thinking about. Okay, so now what about being after, like, like what are you going to be after being champion? You know what I mean? Like, yes. how do you stay relevant? How do you stay relevant? How do you stay on top of people's good graces? So that people don't look at you and be like, oh, he, he won a title now. He doesn't care about, you know, uh, the promotion or he only he's selfish. He doesn't care about nobody in the locker room to get better. He doesn't care, you know, like what is he doing to help build the promotion? Like that, that's very, very important. And not a lot of people are going to do it. And I'm sorry to say, not a lot of people are going to do it. Yeah. And, and you, you've been around the scene long enough. I get right. Yeah. Without I'm trying to not get into it too much, but I, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And it's a it's a work ethic. You know, things don't sure. just come to you. Um, and that's why I appreciate you so much. You you go the extra mile. Right. And, and that's great, man. Um, right. I got two more for you. I'm not wrapping you up. Don't worry, man. I just know you're I know you're in Italy. Um, so go have some fun, man. I know. I know you got the schedule. I know how it works. You know, you know, make sure you and Soraya, you know, uh, got get a chill a little bit. Got places to be. He's got reservations. Um, I want to talk real quick about facing Tommy Dreamer, because not only mm. do you have the opportunity to face Tommy, who I'll go on record as saying is one of the nicest people and most helpful people people in all of professional wrestling um he, he's amazing yes i know you guys have your beef and you guys fought and all that but i just want to go on record saying that um but that being said you got to work with tommy multiple times in fact you beat tommy dreamer yeah i i've heard you talk about it a little bit oh here we go but that being said man um just tell us about not only working with tommy um but also you know i talked to you and, and you do your homework man you pulled out that vhs Tommy Dreamer, uh, and did your homework, man. I think, again, it's the little things, man. It's the intangibles. Just talk to us about that a little bit. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, okay, so when I got the word that I was facing him, um, I said, no freaking way. Uh, you know, all that stuff. Excited, uh, happy, uh, you know, to finally get these opportunities that I've been working so hard towards, right? Um, so I'm like, oh, my God, like, so... I have a, I, I still have a VCR in my house. I have all of these old school tapes. And at the time, I was watching the 1996 J-Crown Cup tournament, um, which if you're not familiar with it, look it up. It's one of the most famous tournaments uh, for Japan uh, wrestling, for Japanese wrestling, I should say. Uh, so I was, as I was watching that, I got the message of, hey, listen, it's you and Dreamer uh, Friday night. And I'm like, wait, what? So I went into my crate, whatever night, and I dug up the tape and, you know, I pop it in and I'm seeing all like, all his old school ECW original stuff with the whole uh, Raven thing. And then like, it, it, dude, it was insane to see because the day of the show, I, I approached Tommy. I'm like, hey, you know, how you doing, Mr. Dreamer? Nice to meet you. Um, we just start talking and like all of this nostalgic feeling starts coming back to me. I'm like, yo, dude, I remember I didn't, you know, I didn't tell him this and stuff because, you know, obviously I'm in, I'm in work mode at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Right? I get but, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm work and I'm like, Dude, I remember like I was 13, 14 years old. I used to watch you on TV and like with the blood and the beer and then caning everybody. And you used to grab uh, Beulah McGillicuddy and you, uh, that was her name, right? Beulah McGillicuddy? That was her name? That, you know, that's before my, I'm, I was a little late to the game, so I don't know all that. I'm probably getting the name, the second name uh, wrong and someone's mm -hmm. probably going to be screaming at this. I remember Beulah. He grabs her, Paul drives her. Oh my God. And I'm like, 
oh my god, I remember all of this stuff, and here I am about to have a match with this freaking guy who's been in WrestleManias and he's been in all these big moments and he's wrestled all these big people, and here I am. Shining Star Ray Kalichi about to wrestle Tommy Dreamer. It was super cool. It was super, super cool. Super cool. It was, it was a great match. And and Ray, last one from me, man. Thank you for calling in from Italy for crying out loud, man. That's amazing. In front of the Coliseum, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so amazing, dude. I always ask you, man, what's next and where's next for Ray Kalichi? Uh, so for right now, I'll give you. Only Thailand. if you want to. Okay. Thailand, Thailand. I'll be in Thailand in November. So I'll give you that. That's amazing. And that's all, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> all right. That's all good. That's, I mean, that's pretty cool, man. I'm sure I'll have a ton of Thailand questions for you. Uh, uh, we'll check yeah. in with you there, Ray. Uh, real quick, plug the socials, sure. plug the merch, uh, anything you got coming up, man. And go and then go enjoy Italy. Don't waste your time with me. <laughs> uh, as always, PAP1 Fresh Instagram. Uh, Facebook, Ray Kalitri, Twitter, Kalitri Ray, uh, YouTube, Ray Kalitri, the merch. Whenever you see me at a show, come up to me. I have a bunch of stuff, T-shirts, hats, 8 by 10s whatever you want. I got you. Don't worry about it. Um, and that's it, right? That's a wrap. Is that is that it? Because I'm sweating out here. It's 90 degrees. I know. My, yeah. phone, my, fo my phone turned off earlier because it was super hot, so it cut off our interview midway through. I'm, I'm dying over here like it's 90 degrees. I I'm a, I'm a little appreciated because I'm under the shade right now, but I'm still dying. I'm sweating. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to enjoy Italy. What, what are we doing? Is this a wrap? It, it's a wrap, Ray. Thanks for the time, man. And guys, like we always say here on the BCP, everyone stay safe, stay positive, take care of each other. We out. Peace. Much love.